Superman 4 The Quest for Peace is widely regarded as a terrible film, and with good reason. The movie is seriously lacking in quality, and was a box office failure that led to a 20-year hiatus for the Superman film franchise. The sole bright spot in the film is Christopher Reeve's commendable portrayal of the Man of Steel, showcasing his dedication despite the diminishing quality of the series. The film's overall lacklustre nature prompts the question, what went wrong? First, we need to have a quick look at the previous three films. Christopher Reeve initially donned the cape and brought the iconic Man of Steel to life in the cinematic realm with the release of Superman the Movie in 1978, a landmark in the superhero film genre. Reeve reprised his role in 1980's Superman 2, a film regarded by some as equal to, if not superior, than its predecessor. However, the trajectory of the Superman franchise took a tumultuous turn with the arrival of Superman 3 in 1983. Notably, Superman found himself relegated to a sort of secondary role, with Richard Pryor's Gus Gorman taking centre stage and dominating most of the storyline. The film faced considerable criticism, largely due to what seemed like an overindulgence in humour, from the unconventional casting choice of Richard Pryor to an opening scene steeped in shameless slapstick comedy. Superman 3 emerged as the most peculiar and out-of-place instalment in the Superman series. This led to father and son producers Alexander and Ilya Salkind washing their hands of the cinematic endeavours of the last son of Krypton. Their pivotal role in shepherding the original Superman to the silver screen nearly a decade prior to the fourth movie's release had granted them considerable success, reaping the benefits of a substantial stake in an international blockbuster film franchise. In a surprising turn of events, they relinquished control to the mavericks of independent film production, Manahem Golan and Yoram Globus, allowing them to acquire an option for further Superman sequels through their company Canon Films. Canon Films, renowned globally for their low-budget action and exploitation flicks, often featuring stars like Chuck Norris or Charles Bronson. Christopher Reeve initially harboured reservations about revisiting the Superman franchise after the reception of Superman 3. However, he eventually agreed to return, with the Canon Film Group financing his passion project, Street Smart, in return. And Reeves also secured a story credit on Superman 4. It is also well documented that the sole was, reason Gene Hackman uh, even entertained the idea of participating uh, in the film was as a personal that, favour to Reeves. That instill At the time, the Canon Film Group faced severe financial difficulties. As a consequence, the budget allocated for the Quest for Peace suffered a drastic reduction from the initial intended $32 million to a mere $17 million, much to the dismay of Christopher Reeve and the entire production team. The actors couldn't ignore the evident lack of funding, yet they pressed on with their commitment. John Cryer, who played Lex Luthor's nephew, said, They were running out of money, but I didn't know that. I just noticed little things, like the craft service table got more and more meagre and they took less and less time every day. We would get props that were especially crappy, but I was still having a blast, and working with Gene Hackman was so much fun. The financial limitations are unmistakable in every frame, evident in lacklustre set design and cheesy costumes. Even the iconic flying sequences, a trademark of the Superman franchise, were compromised due to budget constraints. The film's financial challenges further tarnished the overall production values, resulting in a noticeable absence of the polish and refinement that had been a hallmark of the Superman franchise. The rushed and haphazard nature of the filmmaking process is palpable in the final product, ultimately delivering a subpar cinematic experience for audiences. One of the most glaring issues with the quest for peace is its abysmal special effects. Given the film's meagre budget, the visual effects team faced insurmountable challenges in bringing Superman's world to life. The result was a series of laughably bad effects that diminished the grandeur and spectacle audiences had come to expect from these superhero films. Right from Superman 4's opening credits, the lower production values are plain to see. 
when Superman comes rushing from the distance to rescue a bunch of Russian cosmonauts whose space station has spun out of control, it isn't a pretty sight. The blue screen effects are clearly rushed, with Superman wobbling through Earth's orbit like a badly snipped out photograph. A notorious example is Superman's battle with Nuclear Man, a character created by Lex Luthor. The fight scenes are riddled with inconsistent blue screen work and primitive visual effects that wouldn't even pass in a B-movie, and specific shots of Superman and Nuclear Man flying directly to the camera are repeated throughout the movie. The lack of attention to detail and the rushed nature of the production are painfully evident in these sequences, detracting from any sense of awe or excitement. The script of Superman 4 The Quest for Peace stands as a prime example of rushed and underdeveloped storytelling. Penned by Lawrence Connor and Mark Rosenthal, the screenplay faced the dual challenges of a constrained timeline and budget. The narrative lacks the depth and sophistication that characterised its predecessors, with a plot that feels disjointed and at times implausible. A bizarre example being when Nuclear Man bursts through the ceiling of the Daily Planet headquarters, soaring into space with Lacey in tow. At this point, conventional wisdom about space is upended. Astonishingly, it appears plausible for a human being to endure the vacuum of space without succumbing to suffocation or freezing. A fact accentuated as Lucy gasps and breathes while struggling in Nuclear Man's grasp. Thankfully, Superman's swift thinking, though, intervenes to avert disaster by strategically positioning the moon in front of the sun. He cuts off the life-sustaining rays essential for Nuclear Man's powers. Subsequently, the Man of Steel rushes Lacey back to Earth, miraculously ensuring her safety during re-entry and somehow preventing her from burning up. To add to the carnage that befell the story, the film was cut to shreds. The initial cut of The Quest for Peace spanned 134 minutes. However, Canon Films made the decision to leave 45 minutes of footage on the cutting room floor, resulting in the shortest Superman movie to date, with only 89 minutes. On the DVD commentary for The Quest for Peace, screenwriter Mark Rosenthal lamented that this decision rendered the movie incomprehensible. Indeed, the removal of such a substantial portion of the film had a profound impact on its story cohesiveness. One of the most adversely affected elements was the character of Nuclear Man, the Kryptonian clone created by Lex Luthor. The original cut featured the creation of a prototype Nuclear Man portrayed by Clive Mantle, who ultimately failed before the introduction of Mark Pillow's second iteration. The excised footage also erased the origin of Nuclear Man's romantic feelings for Lacey and left significant gaps in the third act, such as Nuclear Man demanding Where is the woman? from Superman, a line now devoid of context. What woman is he talking about? Nobody knows. And speaking of Nuclear Man, adding to the film's long list of shortcomings is the lacklustre villain. Created by Lex Luthor as a genetically engineered adversary for Superman, Nuclear Man falls flat as a menacing antagonist. Portrayed by Mark Pillow, Nuclear Man lacks the depth and charisma that a memorable villain requires. His motivations are unclear and his interactions with Superman feel forced and unconvincing. Him speaking in Gene Hackman's voice is also very strange and just doesn't work. If you will not tell me, I will hurt people. The lack of a compelling and well-developed villain significantly undermines the stakes of the film, robbing it of the tension and excitement that a superhero movie should deliver. In conclusion, Superman 4 The Quest for Peace is a cautionary tale of what happens when a beloved franchise falls into the wrong hands. From production nightmares, abysmal special effects, a forgettable villain, incomprehensible script and a shoestring budget, every aspect of the film seems to scream disaster. It's a stark reminder that even the mightiest heroes can crumble under the weight of poor planning and financial constraints. As we wrap up our exploration of the pitfalls that led to the downfall of Superman 4, let's hope that the lessons learned from this cinematic catastrophe can serve as a guide for future filmmakers. Remember to like this video, subscribe to Rocky Watches Movies for more deep dives into the world of cinema, 
and let us know in the comments which movie you'd like us to dissect next. Until then, stay tuned for more cinematic adventures, and as always, thanks for watching, see you in the next one.